Now, the NHS got a boost in the government spending review yesterday, with the technology budget rising by 50%. And we're going to continue our AI week this morning, asking if you would trust artificial intelligence with your health. Well, Dr Amir is here, and I guess you're seeing it on the front line that um, AI is being used more and more in healthcare. Morning, Lorraine. It certainly is, and we're going to see it more as the future develops. In fact, robotics and AI are set to soar in the NHS, particularly in England, over the coming few years. By 2035, it's thought that robotics in surgery are going to increase, increase to 9 out of 10 surgeries performed. That's compared to 1 in 5 right now. There's going to be surgeons on consoles with cameras controlling those robotics, and the idea is patients will have better outcomes, shorter recoveries, and shorter hospital stays. But it doesn't just stop there. AI is being used to diagnose and prevent cancers as well. AI, AI algorithms are scanning through millions of healthcare records, lab results, genetic data, and predicting who is at high risk of certain cancers based on patterns it can pick up from that data. And those people can then be put through targeted prevention and screening tools. But also it's looking at images like mammograms, CT scans, MRI scans, and picking up tiny cancers that weren't visible to the human eye. And it may also help with A&E as well. We know A&E uh, is overflowing with patients who might be better suited elsewhere. AI tools are looking at data and identifying patients who definitely need to go to A&E, who may rapidly deteriorate. And those who could be better served through things like GPs or community services are being directed elsewhere. So lots of things going on in the NHS when it comes to AI. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It's amazing. It's life-saving if it, if, it if it all works. It's that thing of trust, though, because you still can't, you know, you still can't mm. get away from the bedside manner and talking to a person as well. So that, that's it's not going to go away. We're not going to, you know, that's not going to happen. And there are things that we can do at home as well. Yes, certainly. So there's lots of apps available now that, that we can all do at home. One of them is an audiologist uh, app. So Apple AirPods and Apple iPhone have come up with things. I've got the new Apple AirPods here. And as long as you've got an iPhone with iOS 18 or above, you can link it to your AirPods. You can go into settings and go down to audiogram and you can download specific audiogram apps. One of them is called Mimi. And what these AirPods will do is test your hearing at different frequencies. They're not medical grade uh, hearing aids. It's not a medically, medical device. But what it can do is identify mild to moderate hearing loss. It then adjusts your AirPods to the sounds around you. And you can put your phone next to someone who's talking and it will cancel out the sound around and you can just hear them. And we've talked about this before, that hearing loss has been associated with higher risk of Alzheimer's dementia. So anything is better than nothing. But if you are worried about your hearing, this might be a good place to start, sure. but go and see a proper audiologist for proper hearing aids. Gosh, it's amazing. And AI, AI can be used in therapy as well because we know that there's massive waiting lists and you know a lot of people desperately need of help aren't able to get it, that in a, a huge long queue. But do you think that AI can work in that way, in that field? Yeah, this is a tricky one for me because people are turning to AI for those very reasons. Uh, and yes, you can get 24 hour support. If you're going through an issue, you can ask AI for support at that moment in time. You don't need an appointment. But I think what you talked about before, that lack of human empathy, mm. that those emotional nuances, which are really needed in mental health consultations. When I see patients, you know, we get them to open up over time because they don't often come straight away with their exact problem. And that's what might be missing with AI. And I wouldn't use AI chatbots for a crisis in mental health. You definitely need to speak to someone if you are having a mental health crisis. Oh, exactly, exactly. Um, we did ask our chatbots, we actually asked them a question, didn't we? we yeah. The question was just, you know, it's kind of quite general. Yeah. It was kind of like, I'm feeling down, which we all do now and again. What should I do? Yeah. And this is what it said. Yeah. It comes up with a lot and yeah. it's, it's it, quite... It asked quite... me whether... 
Yeah, it asked me whether I wanted suggestions or whether I wanted support. I asked for suggestions and it said things like go for a walk, talk to a friend, do something you enjoy doing, all of which are really good. Yes. But if you are feeling really down, I think talking to someone is more important. Oh, I, I, I agree. That's never not good. <laughs> That's never not going to be your absolute go to. <laughs> what about using it, though, for really practical things? Because, you know, I know you are so passionate about people eating in a healthy way, in a balanced way and, you know, getting enough exercise. I mean, AI. I would imagine could really help with that. Yes, it is being used for that. So ChatGPT, people are using ChatGPT to help them make food choices. One of them is going to a restaurant, they scan in the menu and ask ChatGPT which are the high protein, high fiber uh, options for them. I quite like going into a restaurant and just choosing the food I enjoy really <laughs> and same when I get, get home. But we asked ChatGPT to come up with a healthy meal plan for me for a week and it came up with some really nice suggestions. Breakfast with like yogurts and granola and fruit, wow. lunch like tuna wraps and then chicken and chickpeas salads for my for my dinner so really good if you're struggling with knowing what to eat mm. but also I like the, the freedom of choice with food I like going home and going right this is what I fancy I'm going to make it sure. uh, but nice if you're struggling I think no exactly and also just to maybe give you a wee kickstart as well just to get just to get you going one yeah. thing and I, and I think this is quite remarkable it can be used like if you've got any worries about skin like maybe you've got I don't know maybe you've got a sort of rough patches or maybe you've got a freckle or a mole yeah. that you're a wee bit worried about can AI help in, in this area? Yeah. Yeah, this is really interesting. So Boots have launched a free online uh, skin checker on their website where you can take a photograph of your skin condition, upload it there, and it will diagnose you. I say it's free. The diagnosis is free. The treatment or any further consultations does cost money. I took a photo of my forehead and it told me I had some acne, which I definitely do. But it also told me I had vitiligo and melasma, which I don't. And I know that as a, as a doctor. They say it's 95% accurate. The British Association of Dermatologists have said be careful with AI skin tools because they don't right. quite meet safety standards just ah, yet. Not yet, but maybe, maybe one day. Mm. I mean, fascinating, absolutely fascinating, but we will never replace you. <laughs> no robot could ever do it. Thank, Thank you. you so, so much, Amir. <laughs> Great to talk to <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. Looking for more health and wellness content? There's plenty more right here on our channel. How about you check out this one?